But philosophically, it's who we are as Fiji. Just like the affirmation, and that matters. To me, the ABCs of Shinja is life matter. It is the philosophy, and I would do it at any meeting because sometimes a letter resonates with you one day, and it might not have resonated with you the other day, depending on the space where you are at that moment, Pam. Do we sometimes fluctuate spaces in our life? We do. ABCs of Shinja is life is the philosophy behind Shinji. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And remember, this is a Shinnajah Starhood retreat because the basis and foundation of this retreat was based on God giving me Shinnajah in 2013. Because I had a desire to empower women. I had a desire to, to help women take their lives to the next level by connecting with other women, by building strategic, mutually beneficial, good relationships with their sisters. Not feeling like you got to dull your glow when you walk in the room because somebody might have something to say about it. Shine and be who God blessed you to be. Because that is about honoring him. That's about honoring him. That's not about not being humble. But it's about not dulling your glow. Michelle O'Connor is a bad sister. And if she walk in this room, that's not, I'm not going to be like, oh, Michelle, but her mom is so much better than me. You are an amazing woman of excellence. Yes. Don't dull your glow. God gave it to you. You can't be a seat at the table. If you're at the table with God, that's some glowing. Don't be afraid to step into that. But with the end, you got to accept the challenge. Mm. Stuff going to happen. It is. And you, yeah. Yeah. I've seen this. Again, and I keep saying many of y'all know what struggle last year and hair. My handsome son has been around here. Y'all seen him? Mm -hmm. The tall guy? Yeah. He's been helping out. Yeah. Guess what? He has been a part. A lot of y'all been working with and praying with. Stand up, buddy. They clap for you. A lot of y'all. A lot of y'all been working with and praying. God, yeah. God, y'all yeah, yeah, look at that smile. That's right. Stay up there. Y'all gonna be a stand. Come on, baby. Now, guess what? When God bless you with a challenge, you're gonna be blessed with challenges sometimes. But you have to accept that challenge and grow and glow through whatever God has blessed you with. You need to run to accept the challenge. And when you're accepting it with the B, you got to be your very best. Amen. You can't bring no mediocre you to, to, mediocre you to the table and think, think you're going to do something. If you can accept the challenge, you got to be your best. And with the C, you got to combine your words into actions. You can't just talk about it. You got to what? Yeah. Period. You can say stuff all the time, but if you ain't doing nothing, then that's going to happen. D, dedicate your life to your dreams. Be dedicated. It's not going to happen if you don't, if you are not dedicated to it, who else is going to be? And with the E, expect little if you give little. That's just a biblical principle. If you expect little if you give, you want a lot, do a lot. You want your life to change, work to change it. Don't try to do. There's no, actually, there's no such thing as trying. It just don't either you do it or you don't. That's really the truth. My husband told me that. I don't know what it was. But <laughs> All right. I have no idea what that I'm on. You got to do that. Feel, feel good about yourself. As women, we so often have self esteem issues. Y'all said, come on. Her daughter of the king. Who <laughs> can't feel good about being a daughter? God's daughter. Feel good about you. You belong to him. Who are you not to feel good about yourself? And with the genius, you just got to get going. You can't go nowhere at your stance. <laughs> can't. And with the age, you got to have a helping hand. <laughs> Who can just be selfish? Right? Actually, when you help others, you're amazing helping. You can't help yourself. 
You know what I'm saying? When you impact others, God impacts you. But the, I inspired somebody. Anybody been inspired by this lady right here? Yes. Inspire somebody. I look around the room and all of you who inspire me. Your story, your life. Felicia inspires me. Get y'all and the sister who in class. Y'all know Felicia. Who have been inspired by Felicia? Right? And Felicia has some stuff happening. But guess what? She inspires us because she lives through it. There's no definition to how you inspire somebody. Your willingness to just do what you need to do can inspire somebody. Because folks are watching. The J, you got to join the team. You got to join the team. Teamwork makes the what? Don't be an island. And with the K, you just got to keep on keeping them. Keep on keeping them. Again, regardless of the obstacles, the challenges, those things that God blesses you with, you gotta just keep on keeping on with the L. Let your light shine every day. Your light can illuminate the path of others. Take from here to that. So she can lose that up on last night. Did you see the room? Did you see the pathway lit up? Let your light shine. And it ain't just about, how many of y'all say, it ain't just about you, it, but actually it ain't about you. Your life shining is about others. It'll make every moment count. Nobody has no time for playing around. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can have fun. Have, are y'all having fun this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. We can have fun. But you got to make every moment count. Even having fun is making a moment. It's like a whoop saw. Even the fun we're having, it's like a whoop saw. Like exhaling, we're having a, if we have an opportunity to laugh with our, with, my, with our girlfriends and tell jokes and play around and hug each other. Make every moment count in this moment. My husband said to me, Rosianna, yeah, that's my name, Rosianna. He said, um, during this retreat this weekend, you got to steal away and take time in this weekend to enjoy the weekend. And don't just work through the weekend and find yourself on Sunday and you can't even remember what happened. Mm. He said, steal away. Make time. Make it memorable. Y'all gonna see him. He'll be around here a little while sometimes. But my husband actually named Shinichi. And I told him, I said, Sam, I got this. I want to do this for the Lord. But what do you want to do with it? And I told him, he said, well, he came up with the bank. He literally did. Because we're talking about synergistically working together. And it's an amazing play on words. Synergy is a play on energy and synergy. <laughs> right? Synergy. What it's all about those popsicle sticks. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It's an end. Never have yeah, all yeah, yeah. Oh, it's up there. make every moment count. And yeah. then yeah. you never say I can't. This is not true if you connect. If you vertically connected, you got it. You vertically connected, it takes care of the horizontal issue. So if you can't, he can't. And you connected to him, you can't. Period. And sometimes if you can't, she can. Mm. Sometimes if you can't, she can. And she can until you can. That's that, that's hashtagable. Uh -huh. That's tweetable. Tweet. Sometimes, if you can't, she can. Mm -hmm. It's okay to have those beautiful relationships with your sisters. Yeah. Remember the popsicle sticks? Mm -hmm. Oh, don't become your obstacle. Stop crying about stuff. I've just been talking about Tammy the other day. Yeah. But I tell you, Tammy dealing with something of big. And we're going to pray for her. But I told her, told me, she said, I don't know anything but to be strong. That's the mindset. But actually, it's a faith walk if you believe him. If you believe him, that's the truth. You don't have anything to worry about. If you believe in vertical connection, mama, these horizontal issues. You connect vertically, these issues don't mean a thing because they go to him. Easier said than done, right? You say sometimes. That's why I can't, she can. All kind of resources that you have. Overcome your obstacles. With the P, put your best foot forward. Stop worrying about the past. 
Learn from it. Live, learn, delete. Live, learn, delete. Right there. I got it from Lauren. A lot of times I hear you, this. that's my daughter. Lauren, but there's sometimes like, wait, Lauren, you can't live and delete. You've got to learn. That part is critical. Mm -hmm. Right? When you have an issue, you got to learn from it, but you got to let it go. Right? Mama D said, you're not going to even remember. Okay. At P June, quick, quick, you are. Run this race with patience. I still know quick, quick, but quick, quick. If something gets hard, don't quit. Run this race with patience. And stand strong. T, trust your sister. But you also have to be trustworthy. Yeah. Gotta be trustworthy. You use your talents. God is gifted, gifted each of us. He has something just for you to do, Sydney. He has something just for you to do, Tamara, Auntie Sweetie, just for you. Use your talents that he's blessed you with, Sherry. We value your time. W work, 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 mm -hmm. and keep on working until the work is done. And for those of you that have a that faith believe your work ain't done till it's done. done. Mm. Right? Until it's done. Work until it's done. X, X for your own lifestyle. That means your lifestyle. Mm. That means your lifestyle. Let your sister X for him. Why yearn? You gotta want it. Yearn to achieve your goals and ambitions. You gotta, um, you gotta like feel it. In the Z, you gotta zealously be. Zealously be. The best mother. The best daughter. The best sister, the best friend, the best cousin, the best woman of God, woman of excellence, you can be. The ABCs of a synergized life. Make some noise, y'all. Who killed? Who killed? Who Oh, my God. Tell me, yeah, you're 40. I was supposed to finish at 10.45, but we started about four minutes behind. And we did that. I did that for you. Can you grab the first lunch? Yeah, I'm sure she's coming. She's just not coming. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, something. All right. We are. You want to get that? Just take the question. Rich is so awesome. She's a hard part. Thank you. All right. All right, y'all stand up and take a stretch. Just like a 30 seconds of music. Come up, you know. Stretch it out. I don't know how that. You know, because you see. Can't be mad. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. Go, go.
Sí, Oh no, I got so I'm gonna different players All right, all right. All right, ladies, all right, all right, all right. If you're on the outside, you better come on in because when I tell you you don't want to miss a moment of this. <clears throat> Not one moment do you want to miss. We're gonna let the chairs get back filled in so I can I can talk a little bit about Melina as we get the chairs filled back in. She blocked that you can make that people on the other side know we're getting ready to get going. Even before I met Camille, which was in 20, whatever, 18 or something, 16, 2016 at, at Sister Terry's um, Midwest Women's Conference when I met Camille. Even before that, I mean, God just, he's blessed my life with so many amazing women of excellence. He's blessed my life. So many connections. God gives you what you need when you need it. He does. Mm -hmm. um, but I met Marlena. And Mark, in the years, we were the same year I met Camille, but it was early in the year, like July. And um, uh, it was, with our company, Vanguard Sources Consulting, we worked, with, we worked with a lot of events, a lot of clients across the country, and we were working with a um, Black Educators Rock, which was an organization that had about 100,000 Black educators. Uh, and we work with them to um, to do their conference and retreat. And uh, we had all kinds of challenges that year. It was their first year. So they had 100,000 in a Facebook group. Young man started this Facebook group and like it just multiplied. Then you had a sister that decided that she wants to make an organization. That's taken from Facebook to an organization. And so they would put out calls for speakers. You know, they put out calls for speakers. And um, in those calls for speakers, the speaker was sending their proposal and, and, and they may pick that proposal. And she was sending a proposal, we're not sending in a proposal. <clears throat> and so you have multiple speakers that did that. That means they come on their own, so the charity, they come on a hotel room, you pay your own airfare, you pay everything. You just blessed to come, you know, present. Uh, and so Merlana came. And there were there was a there was one there that she was going to be actually, and I'm talking a lot because I'm waiting for people to come back in just in case y'all want to know because it's a lot of people that's not in here right now. Um, they, they had to go to rescue and stuff like that. So what what she she had a she had a breakout session, and there was this one sister. You know she she thought she had a lot going on. And she had a, a flight to catch, and she was like, "Well, I need this session." You know, I need to take this time. It was actually Merlita's time slot. So a lot of people in the time slot, but she gave it to this, this woman, which Lord have mercy, the woman shouldn't have had cancer. Sure. Just saying, right? But Merlita gave it to this woman. So Merlita's time slot was a little later in the afternoon. And this woman may have had 50 people in her session. Because it's just a breakout. Merlita's session probably had, had five. Mm -hmm. Because she gave up her session. Nobody really knew people, right? But the five people in that session were on the executive board of the organization. Right. Uh, those were the five people in that session. Mm. Yeah. After that session, they ran me and the final now, Roxy, Melissa. Y'all gotta come meet this lady, you know. And they started talking about it. And so they were talking about it. And I mean, they were like, you know, they were talking about it. And we went in the meal. We went in the meal. And we met her. And she talked about it. And they talked about it. 
She became the keynote speaker that night at the revival. When God said, hey, we're gonna put her on the, we're gonna put her on the keynote. She keynoted the bank with them. How she started was by giving up a session that she may have only had about 50 or 40 days. And because of that, she ended up having a keynote. I think you were there too, Mama. Mama was there too. She uh, everywhere I go, she be there. Okay. <laughs> I do the same way. You don't think I do. Yeah. All right. So, um, and from that point on, Merlina and I have been connected. Yes. And, and, and this is Super Superwoman Saturday. One of the reasons it's Superwoman Saturday yes. is because when I met Merlina, I, I named her She Wrote. Yes. So when you go to her the website, is SheWroteValentine.com. I named her She Wrote. And you can understand. I named her Sheila, but this is a relationship that God blessed me with. And we have been connected. Then, Lord have mercy, then Camille met her. Once I met Camille, and then Camille met Merlina, then Camille had Merlina speaking on stage with 10,000 folk in the world, paying her all kind of money and all that. Once Camille met her and um, getting her on stages and getting her money right, too. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. When they call her line of night, they just give a Camille phone number. She don't even have, she don't handle that stuff no more. Hey. So she is a BSC handles all of her PR. We have an amazing, but she's our sister. Her line is our sister. She is, just, and so um, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring. And I'm getting choked up, her line. You know what it is. I already know. This level, girl. Oh, um, and so we're going to bring up her line. She will always be a part of us. And whenever we do anything with this, she will be there with us. And um, I'm going to present to you Merlina Shiro Valentine. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Foxy just said, right? <laughs> so what if you knew there were no limits to what you could achieve in life? And you could get whatever it is that you desire and deserve what would you do for it? How hard would you work for it? And would it be beneficial to you and impactful to you, your families? Would it also be impactful to maybe your community, the people that surround you, and maybe even to the world? But most importantly, would it be you living out your God-given purpose? That's the big question. And you see, I pondered that question during the darkest season in my life. Uh, it was a time where in an instant, my life as I knew it was forever changed in one minute. And I faced what seemed to be the impossible. Mm. And all I wanted was to reclaim my quality of life. That was it. That was my one goal. But unintentionally, people, man, started planting seeds of doubt mm -hmm. and fear. And the sheer uncertainty of my future, it nearly robbed me of my self-worth and my strength. Mm -hmm. And I realized we were all gifted with this amazing gift, which is the power of choice. Mm -hmm. uh, we can view things as more possible than impossible if we choose to do so. But that's a hard choice for so many people. But you see, I'm standing with all of you here today because I made that choice. Well, and, and I decided that it wouldn't be man's perspective in my life. It would be that we know with God, all things are possible. And I remember the day that I read this quote. It says, you're only confined by the wall you build yourself. Mm. And that's when I realized that in order for me to move forward, I had to realize my own self-limiting limiting thoughts were holding me back. I had to trust and I had to lean on God in times where I didn't know how to do that mm. is what I did. Mm. And today I want to take you on that journey. It's a journey that I hope leaves an indelible mark on your hearts and in your minds and mm. you leave here with it. And what I know is that it is coming from my story of faith, survival, courage, and hope. 
And couldn't we all use those things more yeah, right now? Yeah. Yes. And, and I'm going to sprinkle in a little dose of inspiration because I want you to face those moments in life, those challenging times in life, especially with a renewed perspective when we have our time here together and it comes to an end. You know, I've heard every single one of the people yesterday who had me so fired up, I could not go to sleep last night. Um, and I kept, kept hearing the same thing, that we can't leave here the same. Right. And that's exactly what I said. We have to commit right now to leaving here more enthusiastic with a renewed outlook. And most of all, we want to be empowered and we want to be able to trust God in all situations and circumstances. And that's why I want to share my story with you so that you take a little piece of this Valentine lady home with you and you never let me out of your heart. So that's where I want to go. You know, I began here when I thought I was empowered. You see, sometimes we think empowered means that you are in power. Mm -hmm. And it's a title or a label or a position of authority. I was confused then. Now, this was August of 2005. I've grown. And I've learned along the way because this is after being 17 years in the classroom as a teacher, I became a principal for the first time. I look pretty good from way back then. <laughs> So I held up. Let's just say it. You know, you got to be able to appreciate what God has brought me through when you know why I don't look like what I've been through, right? Um, and there I thought I had it all going on. I got a new cast of suit in the radio. What else did I need? Right? I oh, my first day as principal, 2005, Brad E. And I was right outside of New Orleans, Louisiana. And um, you know what happened that year in 2005, right? Yeah. Where's my New Orleans lady at? There she is. All right, I met you yesterday, Hurricane Katrina. So I started the year that day, and I restarted it a few weeks later. As a brand new principal, I took in 100 additional students. I already had 650K to five um, fifth grade students. And so it was a challenge because I had to make all those new students feel like they were already part of our family. But my team, my team pulled together. We made it a great year and it was amazing. I got everybody together in a room about this side. I had 100 employees. And I said, we did it. It was a team effort. And you know what, guys? I thought turning 40 that year was going to be my biggest challenge. But look at what we did. I've gone through leading right after a tragedy. And then I had the audacity to say out loud, now, whatever life has for me, bring it on. I'm ready. Don't do that. Don't challenge life. Because guess what? Life showed me who was the boss two years later. I was at work trying to welcome everybody back to a new school year on a Monday night. Meet the teacher night. And I felt this pain in my side. And I said, whoa, that felt different. Let me get it checked out. I'm, I'm working on that physical wellness peak. Strax Hill is my lowest score. Transparent. <laughs> I didn't like going to the doctor, but I went. And I was diagnosed with a kidney stone. Raise your hand if you know anyone with a kidney stone. See, usually the people who go like this, what? they've experienced it. All right. It is it's no joke. But I said that. I said, I'm a principal. That won't take me out. Tell me what I need to do. And the doctor said, oh, well, you're going to see a specialist on Friday. If you have any issues before then, just call me. I said, good, because Wednesday is the first day of school. I can't miss it. I'm the principal. And she said, okay. Tuesday night, I became violently ill. It felt like the worst case of the flu ever. I went to the emergency room. There, I spent hours. They couldn't figure out what was going on. I said before I left, is it related to my kidney stone? And the doctor said, likely not. I said, okay, can I come to school tomorrow? He said, if you feel better. I went home expecting fully to be in that building on Wednesday morning, but instead, I couldn't lift my head off the pillow. Mm -hmm. I went to hospital number two, different hospital. They didn't know what was going on. They kept me there for hours and ambulanced me to hospital number three. Mm -hmm. At hospital number three, it became critical because now I was in major organ failure. My kidney, my lungs, and my heart all shutting down. They said, oh, we got to ambulance you to the main campus. And I said, do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. and, and when I got there, the last thing I heard before being put into a medically induced coma was that if I got there 30 minutes later, I wouldn't be here with all of you. Oh, mm -hmm. That night, my family was told I had a less than 10% chance of surviving the night. 10%. And if I survived, they didn't know what my life would be like moving forward. You see, but man said it was a 10% chance. But look what God did. He made it 100% change. 
Now, I'm not going to tell you getting to where I am today was easy. Mm -hmm. it, it was not. I spent three weeks in the intensive care unit on a ventilator. Mm -hmm. I spent months in the hospital fighting and clawing my way back because the kidney stone blocked my kidney. And I was experiencing an infection called sepsis. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the word before it happened to me. Mm -hmm. And so I won that first battle, but the war, it was raging on. Mm -hmm. When I was released home, yes, I was released and I had recovered. But I was forever changed. Mm -hmm. I will never again be the same. And that is because as a result of me and that sepsis and what was needed to save my life, I became a quadruple amputee. I lost both hands and both legs below the knee. As a Infected, especially the medical people who had never met someone who knew what God could do in my life. And they said, you know, um, it, it's going to be a tough road. And, mm -hmm. you know, the tragedy of it all is that you may never reclaim all the things you love about life. See, they thought the tragedy was going to define me. <sighs> and that was going to determine how I live out the rest of my life. Not happening. Mm -hmm. And I kept looking at him. And the doctor said, are you understanding that you're going to lose all four of your limbs in a couple of months? And I said, send me home. I I'm ready. He said, no, we're going to amputate all four of your limbs. I don't think you're processing that. You're smiling. You're looking at me as though you don't understand the loss that's about to happen. I said, he said, I think you need to talk to maybe a psychiatrist or someone to help you process. Mm. And I said to him with all sincerity, I thank you for that offer. But I've already talked to the one who has talked to you, who has told me it is all going to work out for me. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever you got to do to let me get up out of this bed and move on with my life to fight my way back, go ahead and do it. And that man shook his head and left the room. Mm. He didn't know. You see, the tragedy couldn't define me. I define things. Mm -hmm. I decide when I will move forward and how I will move forward. And guess what? That tragedy didn't become my defining moment. This was. That was the day I didn't just walk back into my school as the principal. I danced my way back. Oh, this long back line is in order for every thing. And that's what I did. Because you see, now, this was the moment where I could show what God had done in my life. That everything you said was impossible, he made possible. And so I want to just let you take a quick list. You might have to listen really hard. You know, the devil is busy. I say whenever I present at, at conferences with, you know, the regular world, the secular world, everything kind of lines up. But somehow, whenever I'm about to share God's glory and what he's done in my life, we have issues, right? So we have tech issues, but the people here have been working. The Camille's, the Roxy's, and where's my friend? We were working, trying to make it happen. So if the video's a little old, we apologize, but just watch what happens in my life. Hearing the word amputation the first time was with that. I don't think I could ever describe it in words, but it was, okay, what are you going to do? Because you don't know anyone who's ever lost a limb, let alone all four. Then what will your life be like? And what will the people in your life have to do? And then immediately I went to, will I ever be able to be self-sufficient? Or will I always need someone? And then who will that someone be? And the church saint is someone, despite adversity, despite all odds, is someone who never gives up hope. And this week's true saint is Merlena Adams. Merlena Adams, the principal of St. Rose Elementary School in St. Charles Parish, is back at work after losing her hands and her legs below the knees due to infections from kidney stones. For two years, Merlena endured numerous surgeries and nearly lost her life. Over time, she learned to walk on prosthetic legs and use her prosthetic hands. Mm -hmm. Marlena hopes that her story can help motivate others who are struggling through difficult times. It's just perseverance. And the kids see it. The kids know it. And even in their writings, they talked about how if Ms. Adams can persevere, through what she's been through. I know the problems that I have won't be that bad. I heard it made that decision on Thursday. You know, once they called me and told me she was sick, that I wasn't going to leave my side. I, I remember it as vividly as I remember anything. He said, I'm not going anywhere. We're going to do this together. 
I thought about my kids in school and how much I'd always preach about perseverance, never giving up, never saying I can't and thinking, okay, he's talked the talk, you can tell you're going to have to walk the walk. Melana Adams is a true educator. She stands for all educators. She has a passion for teaching. Nothing is impossible with Ms. Adams. She takes the I am out of impossible and mm -hmm. makes it possible. It just makes us all jump on that. She said, that, uh, when we did get married, but she went to walk down the aisle. She was not going down the aisle to get married in a wheelchair. Yeah. So at this point, uh, she's back up. She's working. She's back walking, doing whatever she wants to do. So we are getting ready to uh, get planned away. So, well, we're going to make a lot of people uh, very happy to know that today because everybody's been part of our story as far as Fred and family and, and my coworkers and everybody she asked every day. Well, when do you marry him? You know, you can't go on like you He adores She wants that's our story. And I always say it's our story because you can tell you can't come from the brink of death to where I am now, thriving in life, not just surviving in life, not just existing in life, but living life and do that alone. I first started with God and holding on to him and trusting him and leaning on him. And then I realized he surrounded me with what I needed to come back from this. My family, my friends, my colleagues, but you saw my biggest cheerleader, right? Mm. Um, it, it happened to be my now husband, but at the time we'd only dated for one year. And I fully expected, that's why he said when they called to tell me I didn't leave her side, I expected him to walk away. Mm -hmm. I'll be very honest, because I said, I know this isn't the life we talked about or envisioned. We're just beginning this journey. And he could say, you know what? Peace out. <laughs> I don't want any part of this. But right away, he said to me, I'm here. We're going to do this together. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the hospital room, and before they even began amputations, I said to him, I want to go back as principal. I said, and everybody around here is telling me that's crazy. It's not going to happen. Why would I even say that? That's too demanding of a job. And he looked at me, and I carry these words with me, and I hope you do too. He said, what do I need to do to make that possible? Mm -hmm. He lived an hour away from me, and he also had to give up his life, his family, his friends, his job, and he moved to where I was so that he could become my husband and primary caregiver. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the, the part where I know it was God had his hand all over this. I was divorced and met him on Valentine's Day when I was not looking. I was that person saying, I don't need anybody. Mm -hmm. Just raise my daughter and live my life. And I met him on Valentine's Day and his last name is Valentine. <laughs> right? And I kept saying something different. And then on our first date, he said, we can go, but we're going to have to go a little earlier because I got to get back home because my church service begins at 8 in the morning. Uh -huh. And I said, oh, that's the one. <laughs> that's the priority for him. And when he said, what can he do to make it possible? I said, I got to look the part of principal when I return. I want people to focus on my possibilities, not just my disabilities. Mm. And that's what they're going to do. If I don't look the part now, walk in that building confident, he said, wait, you're beating around the bush. What do I need to do? Mm. I said, well, you're going to be doing hair and makeup. Mm. And he looked at me with this sincere face and he said, wait a minute, you wear makeup? <laughs> Y'all were the first year you let him meet the representative. <laughs> and I said, yeah, baby, but it's just to enhance all my natural beauty. He believed it. And the first few weeks, I looked like, um, old old cloud. Y'all blush was up here to down here. But we watch YouTube videos. Thank you, millennials, for posting that. Because I travel now with my own makeup artist. Yeah. And y'all wish you could wake up with that? I said, wait, don't, don't stop there. You got to do my hair. He said, I can comb 
comb your hair. I got a bald head on purpose because I didn't want to fool with hair. But I can, I said, oh, it's more than that. You be flat ironing and blow drying. He said, what is that? <laughs> I said, take your time. I don't want third degree burns. We're going to learn that together. But I also travel with my own hair size. Okay. You know, when people say, look at all you lost. Mm. I said, but God replaced it with even more, yeah. you know, because he put someone in my life that could be my hands and feet, and I couldn't have them. Yeah. And moving forward, all he reminded me is that we live a life of possibilities. Yeah. We don't think about anything else. And I think that's the lesson he taught me. You know, as I said, this is me. This is how I wake up in the morning. This is how I go to bed at night. And people fully expected my quality of life would be different, and they are right. They're right that it was different. They're wrong because they thought it would be poor. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you, I live an incredible life. Yes. A blessed life. Yes. And when my husband puts me back together every morning, just like Humpty Dumpty, well, better than Humpty Dumpty, so they could fix him. Mm -hmm. I go out and I change the world. So while he works on the outside of me, I'm working on the inside of me. Making sure I have the right heart and the mind to do the work that I was left here to do. God left me here to tell this God story. Did. And that's what I plan to do. But this is something we all got to practice more. We got to persevere. Mm -hmm. You see, when I looked in the mirror that first time, I'm not going to lie to you. It took my breath away because I didn't recognize this broken version of me. See, I was always independent, always the one trying to make it happen. This independent. And now I had to rely on others. I was humbled by it. And, and I kept looking in the mirror and saying, I don't want to see this broken version of me. I don't want to represent to anybody that when life gives you plan B, when you don't want it, when it throws you a curveball, your only choice is to quit or to give up. I want to be the reason that all of you face things and go on and move forward. That's why I tell this story. So when giving up was the best option, when they expected me to give up, I said, this current situation will not be my final destination. Oh. I got more work to do. And I got someone by my side saying, we're going to do it together. And so perseverance is about you tapping into the fact that you're stronger than you ever knew you were. Oh. I did not know how strong I was. So that was my only choice. And I choose every day to wake up and face whatever it is that I face. Oh. And so can you. And when I think about that, this is why. I reside in the dome. It's not a place. It's an acronym that stands for don't offer me excuses. Oh my God. Yeah. Don't offer me excuses. People want to slap a label on me. Everywhere I went, they would introduce me. And they would say, oh, this is that quadruple amputee principal. This is that quadruple amputee lady. And then I would stop them and say, hold on. I am a phenomenal woman of God first. Mm -hmm. And then I happen to have amputation. Mm -hmm. See, I'm not letting the labels people try to put on us or the boxes they want to put us in become who I am. I know who I am. And I refuse to live a life that's limited with excuses as to why my life shouldn't matter and why I should live a mediocre life when I know God wants us to live an extraordinary life. Mm -hmm. And so every minute I say, don't give me an excuse. Mm -hmm. Help me see the way forward. If I can't figure it out, be there to push me through. That's about not accepting excuses first from yourself. It would have been easy for me to say, you know what? I'm going to just sit at home and feel sorry for myself and host pity party with pity snacks and pity punch. <laughs> but who's coming? Nobody. And I said, that's not me. Adversity will not win. This tragedy will not beat me. I am victorious. And so when I say don't have excuses, don't let people put you in a box. But most importantly, stop putting yourself in that box yes. and decide what you can't do. Yes. I want to be the reason you leave here today knowing that you can't. Yes. All right. I want you to remember those words because it took a mental shift for me to get through this, this change that I went through. You can choose to change, right? Like Roxy just told us, by doing that assessment, I got some physical work to do. <laughs> you know, all those things stand up for you. I could stand up for any of them. And so I know there are things to do, but I was resistant to change. I didn't like it. It felt messy. It felt scary, uncomfortable. Any of y'all been there? Anybody love change? <laughs> Usually I have one or two, but rarely do we have people who love change because we see change in a different way sometimes. You see, when I choose to change, like when I retired in 2016, see, I'm retired, but I'm still working, like Roxy said. But I, I said to myself, this is going to be a different kind of life. You know, when you retire, my husband's first thing was, we got to be on a budget. I said, what's that word? <laughs> I never had to do that. He said, well, I mean, think about it. We're retired. 
And I said, okay, but as soon as he said that, the Macy's one day sale ad came on TV. <laughs> it was family and friends day. It was an additional 40% off. And I convinced him if he brought me, Macy's would pay me to shop. <laughs> but I went and, and I said, this bunch of things not working out. So if I abandoned it, it's okay. I chose that change, right? Mm -hmm. What happens when change chose me? Did I have a choice? Could I change the outcome? I just changed my outlook. Yeah, that's it. And I said, this is a change I got to go through so I can get where I need to be in life. For whatever reason, I was chosen for this different path. I'm letting God guide me through it. I have no idea where he's taking me, but he has brought me to some amazing new heights. And, and that's because I trusted. And I realized change is not this horrible thing that happens. It's something that is necessary. If you want to have different in life, you're going to have to embrace change. Here's why most people resist it. They're always focused on what they have to give up. What new thing do I have to learn? Will I enjoy it? Is it going to be different? What will I lose? Instead of focusing on what can the change bring to you? See, I started thinking about I lost a whole lot, but I definitely have more W's in the column of wins. Yeah. <laughs> because going through this change, I started looking at what I have and not what's missing. I'm never going to have my hands and feet again. But that did not stop me. Because in my eyes, I'm looking at me through God's lens to say that you can do all things. Yeah. The Christ who strengthens you, and that's how I operate. And so we got to stop thinking that change is this horrible, messy, scary, uncomfortable thing. Because when you cross that line and you embrace change, that's where you're going to learn and grow the most about you. Yeah. I, myself, am the new version, Marlena 2.0. How many of y'all remember the show, The Bionic Woman? Let's tell our age. Bionic Man. They were an actor and an actress. But standing before you is the real $6 million. Oh, I'm not lying. We crossed that again. It cost that much almost. But you see, they were playing a part, and I'm living the life. And so that's why whatever I say it comes from my heart. I'm an authentic and genuine, transparent. Because if I can't do that, I don't deserve to be in front of you. To tell you that this road is easy, absolutely not. Every hour I get a new obstacle, a struggle, something that I have to overcome. But what I will never do is quit. And I want you to start seeing change in that way because you know what? Perspective matters. What lens do you look at life through? Are you looking at it through that lens of impossible? I can't do that. I'm not qualified for that. So then you don't try Oh, that's too hard for me. That's going to require me to learn new things, and I'm too old for that. So you stop trying. But what if the thing that you were put on this earth to do is right there on the other side of I can't, it's impossible, I won't. But you'll never know that unless you cross over to that bridge of making and proving that it's possible. Perspective matters. How you look at things matter. It helped me to heal because I lost my limbs. I lost my independence. I can tell you, Roxy always says all the time, I haven't driven a car legally since 2007. Now, I can't tell you I have been behind the wheel in a parking lot. But it's my goal. So I took a lot of L's. I almost lost my life and my life's work. But I still feel like I am victorious because I see things so differently now. God has revealed to me that life is not what I planned. Miss Organizer, Miss Planner, don't you mess with anything. I got it all thought out. He showed me that I was not in control, that I had to release some things, let go of what I thought life should be like, and embrace what life is. Y'all want to hold on to life should be a little easier for me. I, I want a non, you know, threatening life. I want a life that's not filled with obstacles. I don't want to do that. I want a drama-free life. How many times have I said that? My mom say, okay, I'm drama-free. Don't bring that around me. But in those times, I forget just how strong and powerful I am when life's going as planned. And, and I'm easily able to thank God. Thank you, God, for all these blessings. Thank you for covering us. Thank you for making it a way because we didn't see a way. But what happens when adversity hits? Right. And trouble happens. And, and you got something in your life you can't control and you don't know how you're going to just go up and meet each new day. And, and I started saying, saying to myself, you got to think a little differently now because you're not in control. So in these stormy seas that I had, I was still thanking God because I said he saved me. 10% chance of living. Y'all, I'm not supposed to be here, but I'm a living, breathing miracle. I'm right here. That's why I tell people 
people don't feel sorry for me. No way. I'm living the life. It's different than what I envisioned, but it doesn't make it any less joyful. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. I choose joy. Yes, right. Joy doesn't happen. I choose it. I wake up every day and say, today is going to be a good day. Why? I only have good days. Right. That doesn't mean I don't struggle. I don't have moments, but I don't stay stuck there, holding on to stuff. Don't we do that? Yeah. We want to hold on to stuff. I had a family member right before I left. I said, you know, I'm about to go speak to amazing women, and I can feel the energy already. And, you know, I said, and, you know, there's nothing you're doing, and I hope you invite this other family member. And she said, oh, I don't like her. You yeah. know? I said, okay, but I love her, and I know she would benefit. She said, well, I don't, I don't like her. I'm full with her. I said, well, what happened? She said, I don't really remember. <laughs> I just know I don't fool with her. So you're holding on to something. You can't even remember what it is. Oh, and it, yeah. it, 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 how long ago? Maybe five years. So do you think she's not living her life while you over here angry? Oh. I'm like, you better release that. It's not about her. Yeah, it's about right. you being able to know where God wants you to go. Yeah. Perspective in life matters. I just remember recently I spoke and a gentleman had been in the audience on three different times. He heard me share my message. He sat in the front row right here where Dr. Dye is. And you know you can keep in your peripheral vision and somebody's there sitting like this. And with that look of, I don't see much to say. And, and he came up after on the third time and he said, I just have a hard time believing that you're that excited about life, that you're that grateful in life when you lost all of your limbs. I don't mind having a discussion. Mm -hmm. And I first wanted to say the old me, before I pledged to God, I would be using these as a teachable moment, wanted to say, well, how can you be so angry you got all your lips? <laughs> I didn't I thought. And I said, God, give me the right words. And I just said to him, this is something I choose to be every day. Right. Joyful about life. Grateful about life. Just happy to live because... What's my other alternative? We have more work to do. So what you see is truly who I am. And, and you can ask anyone who's around me, this is me. Put on some music. I'm the first one on the dance floor in life for the party when they told me I'd never dance again. Mm. I can out dance every one of you in the room. I'm not being. Oh, I'm just saying I wasn't supposed to have to do it. And so I get out there and I act like I'm the best. Yeah. Yeah. Because God told me, stop putting limits on what you can do. The fourth time I happened to meet this gentleman, he said in the first row, his arms were not crossed anymore. Mm. Because you see, whatever I said, it sunk in. Yeah. And his choice to not hear me was his problem. It was not mine. Think about how much your perspective in life matters. What are you looking at? Everything that you face in life, through what lens? I want you to look at it as, I know I can do this. And I'm going to trust God to take me on this journey. As Camille said, he's going to light that path for me. Mm -hmm. I'm taking that with me because there's some times I feel lost. And I have to say, where are you bringing me, God? Please let me know. Because right now, I'm not sure this is where I belong. And he always reminds me. This stuff wasn't supposed to work, was it? Mm -hmm. Look at God. Mm -hmm. He needed y'all to see that. He needed you to see the joy on my face when I was doing the, the wobble. Hey. <laughs> At my wedding, that was on the Today Show, when people told me I would never reclaim my quality of life. Well, see, that's man. Yeah. That man in your ear too long. Things don't happen. See, everybody who came to see me, medical professionals, some of my even family, they would come in not knowing what to say. You know when people go through things, sometimes you just lost them. What do I say? I'm, a, I'm mad at that. When you tell me something horrible has happened, I'm like, what do I say? I'm sorry. I hear my gun. Like, I don't even know what to say, but people came and they didn't know. So I was very understanding about that. I offered grace to everyone, but they would always say, I know you sit around in this hospital room when you're here by yourself because visitors can't stay overnight. I know you say, why me? Mm -hmm. I know you say, why did this have to happen to me? Why did something bad have to happen to me? Mm -hmm. They're surprised when I tell them. I never once said, why me? Mm -hmm. God never let those words come out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Actually, what I said out loud is, why not me? Mm -hmm. First of all, who else could do this with style and grace? God trusted me with this journey. Come on, God. He said, I'm going to prepare you for this journey, and I want you to show people who I am and what I can do in life. Yeah. Everything you do should be to glorify me. Yeah. It's not about me, y'all. Yeah. It's about what God has done. And I even say, you know what? 
Would I wish this on somebody else instead? Mm. And if I ask that question, am I going to get an answer? Oh. We're not. Oh, and if I ask it, it means I feel like a victim. Mm. Like something was done to me. Yeah. Instead, I say, you know what? I've come out of it. And so I'm blessed and grateful. Mm. So there will be no why means and no feeling sorry for me because of where God has brought me and the journey I've been on and how much I've learned about myself and my relationship with God and being able to trust him when something tragic happens. That's the hard times, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're wondering in your mind, how am I going to get out of this? Mm -hmm. Is this the moment I need to really lean on God? I had to. I had no choice. And so I, I want us to stop playing the victim and realize we're all victorious. Yes. 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 And hold on to that when you leave here today. You know, that teacher, I didn't pay her to say that. I didn't even know they were interviewing my teachers when they did the video. But it's so uh, a part of who I am to take the I am out of impossible to make things possible. But I don't do that. God does. Yes. You know, she, she she knew that part. But, you know, she said, I didn't know if I should say it because we always had these faith talks, she and I. And she said, I just didn't want to do that because, you know, in public schools, sometimes you can't bring up God. I'm like, well, I do it whenever I can. Mm -hmm. Because, see, my whole story is God. Okay. Yeah. Everything about me is God. Everything I've achieved and accomplished and overcome is because of God. I'm just his vessel right now. And he's moving me and doing things. And I'm like, come here, I'm like, God, I ain't trying to do that today. <laughs> that That's not the journey. And he says, I need you there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing because yesterday I got up at 1 a.m. It takes about two hours for my husband to put little Humpty Dumpty together. And I had to be at the airport for a 5 a.m. flight. I ain't gonna say thank you, Rocky, but I chose it. I told you it was okay. But she put me on Monday. <laughs> and y'all realize I was here till the end of the night last night. 10 30 ish. Yeah. I ain't taking that. I didn't go to the room and rest. And my husband kept, you know, he's the man that is the most concerned with me more than I did. He kept saying, girl, your legs are supposed to be on less than 10 or 12 hours. It's going on 16. And then he said it's 18. He was texting me while we were like, you need your medicine. You need to get home. Is it okay? Are you feeling okay? And I said, let me tell you, I don't feel anything. And he brought my joy. I couldn't even go to sleep last night because I'm in a room filled with women who love God. And as much as I do. And the energy wouldn't allow me to rest. Uh -huh. And he said, how are you going to get up in the morning and be your best? I said, God's going to figure it out. For me. Right. But it, it was something about being in the midst of yes. Uh -huh. that, that moved me in a way that I said, whatever happens today, yes. it's going to be okay. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I'm going to make it through this whole day. Uh -huh. After standing on these other legs that my children named Jack and Jill. Uh -huh. um, I, I'm just going to try my very best because what I'm receiving from you is way more than I'm giving. Come on, come on. And, and that's what you got to be able to leave here today knowing. Take yes. away more than you can give. Because it's being given to us yeah. by everyone in this room. Yeah. Everyone. So take that I am out of impossible. You know, here's what I remember. When I was in the ICU, I had just been woke up, um, awakened from a seven-day medically induced coma. My family didn't tell me what was going on. I thought I had the flu. And I thought I had a kidney stone. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't know what was happening. Mm -hmm. And they would not tell me. They would come in with that look on their face like I'm worried. You know, that fake smile we give. And I'm like, that's a fake smile, my daughter's face. Why is my sweet Tori looking at me like he doesn't know what's going to happen to me? All the tubes were running out of me. And they didn't know. And I had a 25% chance of surviving at that point. Mm -hmm. My heart was functioning at 25%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what they were told. I didn't know. And I remember being in that room, looking at the clock one night, the doctors came in, and the only way I could hear the truth was to close my eyes. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, oh, she's asleep. And he told the nurse, I'm looking at her vitals. I think we better call her family back. She might not make it to the morning. Mm -hmm. And when they left out, I, I opened my eyes and looked at the clock, and I said, you know, God, if, if this is it, if this is my time, I'm sitting here wondering, have I lived the life that I was supposed to live? What will people remember me for? What will I leave behind? 
See, that dash between your birth year and your ending year, that's what matters. And I say, God, I don't know if I've been doing things right with this dash. And I told you, if you allow me to just keep going, mm. I promise you, this second chance at life is all yeah. going to be about what I can do for you. And he, I remember him saying, you're in this room by yourself, but you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And this walk you're about to take, you won't be on your lo alone. And he said, this is not the end. Mm. So when the doctor came in and he saw my eyes open, he was surprised. And, and I couldn't talk or communicate, but he saw a smile behind those tubes. Mm. And I was there in the morning mm. when my family came. And I kept waking up. Mm. God kept saying, one more day. Okay. And, and so when you wake up every day going, oh, what was me? I don't know how I can make it. I got back pain. Oh, my neck hurt. Oh, my God, that whatever it is, what I need you to know is, you can keep going. Yeah. So you're not about to give up. You're not about to be someone who just throws in the towel. We're too strong for that. Yeah. We're too powerful for that. Don't ever forget whatever you faith God is there with you, giving you what you need to keep going. He gave it to me. I'm not extra special. I'm not the only one. He's our God. Yeah. Take that with you because now I know when I leave this earth, besides people remembering I love children, I love to serve, I love my family, I love life, there is something you all will remember about me. That when I face tremendous adversity, when throwing in the towel should have been what I've done, I never gave up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. And I hope what you take from you is that you won't give up either. Mm -hmm. Let me be the reason why you can why you leave here completely different and transform. Let my voice resonate with you in those tough, trying moments where you say, you know what? I remember she wrote Valentine Ross's name for me. <laughs> and if she could do it, I can do it. Because yeah. there's nothing about me that is any better than anyone else in this world, mm -hmm. except I am a true believer of what God can do in our lives, and I trust him unconditionally. Yes. So everything that continues to come my way, every struggle, every challenge, he surrounds me with people that remind me of that. Mm -hmm. This morning, if it weren't for a few people in this room telling me, we're going to figure this out, it's okay. I probably would have been a nervous wreck up here, but God can say, stay calm, share the message. Mm -hmm. Let these people know life is what you choose to make it. Yes. Don't let anybody control the kind of life you're going to live. Mm. She made me mad. He made me angry. If he would do his job, I could do what I... You know what? All of that is not important. Yes. What do you choose to do and who do you choose to be? Because in the end, it's going to be about what you left behind. Mm -hmm. What is your legacy? What are you, the seeds that you are planting right now that can grow and bloom and harvest? Because I'm a harvest sister. Mm -hmm. right? We might not be around to reap the harvest. When I get to that winter time, please, Lord, let me get there. But I know I've left so many lives touched from being an educator, thousands of lives, to being someone who shares a message all over this world. And let me close with this. You could have the most inspirational and phenomenal, incredible speaker of the year. By the way, I want inspirational speaker of the year. I'm just saying And I got a call, and I did that. That's not me. God said, girl, put yourself out there and do it. Yeah. And I said, you sure? That's in Canada. Those people might not resonate with my message. Do it. Yes. yes. First U.S. winner ever. Oh. Wow. Like, I'm not supposed to do extraordinary things. I'm supposed to be mediocre. Getting mm -hmm. around feeling sorry, sorry, yeah, that's, that's not the life God wants in well, well, so whatever we're facing in these challenging COVID times, we're pushing through and we're managing it, but it's not letting it manage us. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Let me leave you with that. So you can have me come before you and speak, and you can have all the incredible women that have come up to share. If you don't leave here receiving what we've said. Mm. that life will not change yeah, sure. open your hearts open your minds connect with each other leave here forever changed in a way that now you're ready to face whatever life throws our way, don't challenge life but just be ready if you stay ready, what? you don't have to get ready All right. it's been my honor and privilege to just be amongst the women who are here 
Some of you have met on virtual things with Roxy. Some of you I will meet as the weekend progresses. Yep. But I surely hope that what I shared today has something that was of value to you and touched your heart and that you can see God all over me. Mm -hmm. This is who he made me to be. Well, Thank you so much. Huh? No. Okay, y'all see, she doesn't ever do this, but I can do this, folks. Right here. I, I, did I tell y'all? Y'all gotta make some noise for Steve. Yeah. She can all speak, I don't know, I don't know, lots and lots of times. But she's traveled to Camilla now. We, um, we set up things for her. She's been a part of a lot that we've done. And every time, I'm in my lineup today, I, I'm telling you what, every time, every time, her message is different. Amen. Mm -hmm. God used, I mean, he used, yes. he used. Yes. Yes. It's yes. nothing I prepared that came out today, I'm just going to tell you. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you what, the Holy Spirit <laughs> used you. And I am so happy that we connected oh, and had more than time together. together. More than time together. She only had 10% chance left. That a prayer was the only thing that could do. Oh, to do it. So we turned it over to God and brought her back. You see her as she is right now. And uh, the next morning, when uh, you know the vital signs, I saw the vital signs going up. I just praised her. I got there and I can see she was going. I can see those numbers going up that God and that's my friend. I knew she was going to be okay. All right. So, well, that you said, you said I chose. Yeah, I chose to say absolutely yeah. because it's not a God is the only one that can put this in my hand. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so we blessed. I'm telling you right now, and of course we know God has His prayer, and He has His prayer. This is it. And He is the only male in His family. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you what I have. Uh, men come up to me all the time and tell me I would definitely do that. With my wife, or with my friend. Yeah, I've just done. Any other questions? I was supposed to have questions, and I'll spend a The guy kept telling me to say one more thing. We are very transparent to a fault almost because we don't want to stand before you and put on. Is who we are, is how we live. And so there are no questions that are out of bounds for us because we feel like that's the only way we can share what we've been through so that people can grow from it and, and get something from it. Yes, ma'am. Um, the question that I want to ask you, you, the question that you, I mean, you have inspired me so yes. much. Yes. And I know it was God that has me here. Mm -hmm. 
to receive what you had to say to me, mm -hmm. to let me know, don't give up. Don't, yes, mm -hmm. don't let nobody define my life mm -hmm. that I can do it. And yeah. guess what? You're yeah. going to do it. No, mm -hmm. And I'm going to think about you, though. Please. And I'm sincere because I speak from my heart. This is not rehearsed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thank, thank you. you so much for this. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I remember her from so many calls. Hey, 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 I, I, don't... I just want to know would you give us a couple of that line dance steps? Maybe look at her tea time. Right. I'm going to let Jack and Jill rest up. I'm going to let you know I'm going to be here. 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 i Principal, yes, you said it. Well, yeah, yeah. She often went from the classroom to a district leader. Did you? No, no. <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't about me, but I'm gonna make it no, about me it. because it's God who moved for me. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to go back as principal. They told me no, my district said come back. Mm -hmm. The second year that I was back, I won principal of the year and I was named one of the top five principals in the state of Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And they did label it quadruple amputee. Yeah, they put it as principal. And when I was ready to ret um, retire, thinking about it, my superintendent came and said, I want you to come to central office so you can supervise all the elementary schools in our district. And I'm thinking, I wasn't supposed to be principal, and now I'm going to supervise principal. Oh. And I said, no, at first, because I love children. Not as much as I love adults, but I love children. And I said, um, but now I can impact more children at that level. Yes. So I had to say, yes, God said, you're going to say yes. We're going to make it happen. So yes, Rocky, before I retired, I was at the Central Office. Yes, and award, award winning district um, yes. leader as well. Uh, so, I mean, I don't have any words, but I told y'all, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, uh, she wrote, inspired me. And, it, and, and this is the thing, uh, it, my thing was that if she wrote can do, she does. Come on, Roxy. Yeah. yeah. And I would call her and say, and then she would say to me, when I, when I would say stuff like, well, you know, you're going through this, and I'm just, she said, no, it's not you just. Oh, yeah. You don't compare your journey to my journey. Yeah, oh, right. It's your storm. It's, it's your storm. And so it doesn't take away your storm because you're comparing it to my storm. Yeah. But see, for me, her storm inspired me to do whatever I need to do in yeah. my storm. And by the way, my husband, he'll be around here soon. I just yeah. told Tori, he just said, drop the mic. Whatever the cross, he's like, Tori, is just drop the mic. You, there's no, um, Tori inspires men whenever, whenever men are around and Tori and, and Merlana speaks, um, it impacts me. Yeah. And um, I was having some issues. I, I think I was having some issues with my arms and one time and I was dealing with it and Sam was like, well, Tori can do she, um, she go here. So he tried to break my hand. <laughs> But he did it, but he did it, but he did it for the children. But he did. And so it's it's been amazing because he, because of course he travels with her everywhere. And this is this is so funny. We you know, we we've been through a lot and she's salty, so she she not play she don't play no games, right? And so we had an event that really wasn't treating us that right. And um and Tori was not, you know, he's very mild, but he had to have about some things. And they wanted her to come and do something at this particular event. And Tori was like, well, you know what? She's not doing it because guess what? She can't buckle her seat down on the plane. So he said, so I ain't going. So I don't know how she's going to get there. And so um, everywhere she goes, yeah. she said, yeah, with my own makeup on, his hairstyle, back to the college. I had the wrong shirt and I came in. I said, can I get the right shirt? And they said, sure, you speak and I'll give it to you. And he looked at me and he said, you're not wearing that as wrinkles. <laughs> and when I put you out there, you know, when we go out here, we represent each other. And I said, yes, sir, I'm going to be sending you the good. Thank you, because see, he, he keeps me in a space where I need to be. And so I argue with him, debate with him. I trust him because God brought him to success. And it's been times, and I know that this is in some of her stories, that 
you know, if anyone kind of is, is around her, you're not you're not 100% sure. I mean, I thought when I first met her, I thought maybe she had arthritis or something. I didn't know. She walked a little different. But nobody knew because we were, yeah, they were, she was dancing. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> dancing on the dance floor right and so um uh so she people will tell say things to her uh, a woman came up to her to her one time and was like you know why do you have him doing everything for you oh. why he gotta carry your purse why he gotta this is what somebody who didn't know her said to her you have no idea of somebody's story right you have no idea that was either lazy or spoiled. Y'all know what I replied? I'm very spoiled. I'm sorry. You don't have a king that treats you like the king that treats you. That's right. Because she said, you kind of lazy or spoiled. You got to carry your tools. You don't know that I can't carry myself. I didn't ask that question. So I left her right there in that moment. I I appreciate you all over anything. We have another question. I know we got some people that's going to Oh, no, I'm going to just say, keep going. Yeah. When you're broken, you don't realize when you're going through something that God is the one that's bringing you through. Absolutely. In 2018, I had found the love which wound up being breast cancer. But before I can, I kept having to get my appointments postponed because God had taken life and stuff coming. Mm -hmm. I had it for 21 years. Mm -hmm. I went into the hospital and I stayed there for about a month because they said it had got so bad, they were afraid that it was going to burst as a big second. Mm -hmm. And I started crying and said that the children to be there. Mm -hmm. And now I realize that God he kept and he left her here for a reason mm -hmm. and took care of you mm -hmm. because the next one I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So that surgery had to go on hold so that I could get through the breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I finished with everything, um, and two months after I started breast cancer, my husband walked out of it. Mm -hmm. I ain't never looked back. Mm -hmm. But after I finished everything in September 2019, mm -hmm. the breast surgery, the chemo, radiation, I had to turn in November into emergency, emergency surgery and within 12 hours of my colon. Mm -hmm. really saved my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And look at you. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I think you're sharing that. Very inspirational. I'm glad that I'm able to be able to meet this woman. Um, my question is for upcoming teachers. I believe God's getting ready to bless me to be a uh, kindergarten teacher. What, what advice do you have for? An upcoming teacher. Mm -hmm. The reason why you're going to become a teacher is the reason you have to hold on to, because there will be moments where you're, you know, challenged, or in these times, it's very challenging. Yeah. But what I say is, I only lost my weight when I lost my why. That the reason I became an educator was because I love children and I wanted to impact them forever. There is no other profession where people will remember you forever. I can tell you who my kindergarten teacher was, which was a bitch. How many of you can? Go back. Okay. So you are someone that will be with the child for generations. They're going to tell their kids about you. So never lose sight of why you're choosing to go on that path, even when it seems messy and scary and uncomfortable. That's my biggest advice. Sit at the end of the day and reflect upon what did you bring to that classroom and to your student, and everything else does not matter. I think Good question, Tamika. And then also, she does she does a lot of training. That's why I, I got off on that with uh, with educational leaders. So she trains school district employees. She trains corporate. Um, uh, we were in a training one time when she was training all of the executives of a hospital chain. Uh, and so she does a lot of leadership coaching as well. So I say that, and I always say this is a it's a synergy event. A lot of you. I uh, may very well be in spaces where someone could be blessed by what Merlina does. And so I, that's why I made the statement. I'm, I'm hopefully you all took pictures of her uh, 
of um, information. She has a book, but she doesn't have the book. Do you have the digital copy of the book? I do not have to get to the copy. Our home flooded in Hurricane Ida. We've been in a hotel and an apartment since August 29th, but you'll never know that. We're just grateful to be alive. And so all my books were in the flood. And uh, to order them and get them here on time were it's impossible. So yes, I only had them gone. Um, they can Google my name. Okay, okay. Oh, uh, you already Googled my uh, Her And her website is shewrotevalentine.com. Dot net. Dot net. Shewrotevalentine.net. And again, she is a part of us. So you ever want to contact her, just contact us. Her uh, exclusive publicist is Camille. Right? <laughs> her exclusive that publicist. Is so Camille came in and she, so let's, let's give it up again. Her real Valentine. Thank you, sir. So y'all weren't ready for this weekend, were y'all? I'm telling you what. I'm telling you what. Um, we're going to in a second. Look like y'all y'all need to stand up again. I don't know. Well, I know we can already go to this other part. They might need to stand up again. I am not. I'm not defined by a whole lot of time this weekend. I'm just gonna tell you. I'm spicy, but you know what we're doing matters. What we're about to do next matters a lot. So Camille, don't be worried about the time. The food right over there. And so we're not going to truncate the time. We have something really super important that we're getting ready to do. Um, but last night, last night, um, I gave out some, um, last night I gave out some, some fresh water pearls to hand women. And they all have them on today. And you're going to talk about it. But one of the women that I was going to put to wasn't here because she was so exhausted. Because all these shirts y'all have on, all those shirts over there, she's buying all those bags and all of that. Her company did that for her mom. So let's first of all make some noise for Lauren that they call every day of the earth. Um, matter of fact, come on up, baby girl. Uh, so she is really talented. She's been working with Camille and uh, she's actually our exclusive graphic, this, um, graphic designer. But I wanted to take the opportunity uh, to give my baby girl these these pearls. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. oh, I love her. She's a springtime sister. And so y'all love on her when y'all get the opportunity to talk to her. And say it again. Okay. Like official. Daddy, <laughs> yeah, take a picture. <laughs> That's my brother. Hold up your hair. <laughs> okay. Let me duck down. Uh, oh, guess I'm sorry. <laughs> She's going to be manning that store over there. We still have a lot of stuff. We'll talk more about that because tomorrow is Synergy Day. So y'all got to get your sheep power stuff um, tomorrow. Camille, Camille, you ready? All right. Again, uh, everything on purpose, for a purpose. Everything that we're doing because it's about us being better. It's about us improving. It's about us taking our lives to the next level. That's what it's about. And so, um, Camille Wilson. Okay. I don't forget about this one. So, so um, are you guys having a wonderful time? So, one of the things we want to do right now is just to take this opportunity in this moment to understand and know. We we didn't just um we didn't just do this arbitrarily. Everything was intentional. Even the fact of the decorations, the colors, we you know we have our various colors for our um seasons. And 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 in that um we look at think about um Ruth and Naomi and when um and I, I just went black, black, I won't mean black, I am just I said it. I just, like, my like, mind just went blind. Okay. Like a little time to sustain that. Okay. Come on. 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 Come on.
and y'all be cheering on me. She walked to me and said, I know what you were trying to say. You were trying to say what? So, so, um, don't, don't, okay, so, so, uh, one, if you can think, anybody can think for me real quick, because it's in Genesis, and I can't even think of her name, but the one who, um, acted like a prostitute, uh, because, uh, yeah, right. yeah, no, not the actual prostitute, but the one who pretended, hang on, hang on, thank you, that's good one. Okay, so, um, and I want y'all to, to, because this is important what we're about to do. Think about what Tamar did in Genesis, what she did because she felt like Judah hadn't given her what she deserved. He, she felt like he forgot about her because remember she said, um, remember her husband had died and um, and then one of his male sons had died, which was her husband. And though, so he promised the youngest one when he got of age that, that he would become her husband because again, thinking about that time, you basically, if you didn't have a male or someone to, which protected you, brought you in, you pretty much were destined to a life of um, prostitution or being on your own and just being able to survive. So he promised her something and he didn't live up to the promise. He basically, I don't know if he forgot, I don't know if it was that he didn't think that, that even his youngest son would live on. But I want you to, she did what she had to do in order to get to a different point. Stay with me. I'm not saying, because what she did was she acted as she dressed, took off her um, garment of, of grief and all of that, and then she went and, and dressed like a prostitute, stood and, and got Judah and basically tricked him. But she did what she had to do to survive. Now, don't y'all go back talking about Camille said we can lie and we can be prostitutes and whatever we have to do to survive. That is not what I'm saying. Don't y'all take that back. But what I'm saying is this pay attention to the difference between me on my own making decisions and choices to survive in comparison to Ruth. When she was at a point to where she lost everything. And she got to a point to where I got to make a decision to survive. She had someone with her to advise her. Naomi, where I go, you where you go, I go. Your God will be my God. And the decision, because she listened to her own memory. Because she listened to her mother-in-law, her mother-in-law guided her, told her what to do. And the result was she was in the bloodline of Jesus. Because when you listen to them, they both did what they had to do to survive. But Ruth leaned on the wisdom of the older sister. Yeah. And so at this time, we want to just take the time to truly show the importance of that. Um, well, uh, if you can come on up and, and get, get ready for us, I'll, I'll get you ready. And then um, what we're going to do now is really to demonstrate this importance. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to truly have a time period and a session. This, is, this, this time period is, am I my sister's keeper? And what we're going to do is have a discussion. I, I, if you know me, all you you know, all you need to do is come talk to me and ask me. And I'm very transparent. I'll tell you. I may have to keep. I, I'll tell you what it's like. I mean, I'll share it with you. Uh, you know, you may have to give blood to show that you don't repeat what I say. But what I'm saying is, I will. But the important thing is, we need each other, right? And the wisdom that's in our wintertime sisters to be able to share and impart that wisdom to harvest summer and springtime. But what was the deciding factor? What was the deciding factor? The deciding factor is that Ruth listened. That's it. 
And, and so we want to take this time just to do an uh, exercise of just showing that meeting. And, and Dr. D is going to uh, demonstrate for us what this will entail. And then we will then we will do what we need to do, and then we will have a discussion. And the discussion time will be summertime, springtime, harvest time. You all can ask our wintertime sisters any question that we need to ask. Wintertime, it's up to y'all to decide to answer and give us the feedback. Because I don't know about you all, but I'll go through some things. I'll talk to my mama. Oh, Oh, girl, y'all gonna do that. <laughs> Don't do that information. Make it to me. But that's the thing. They have so much wisdom and they have they've been through so many things. And I know in a in a time period of when when they were raised, it was not sharing stuff. You keep stuff quiet. But we're in a different time frame to where we're asking and begging for help. And if we got verbally saying it, some of us are showing it in our actions that we need help. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take this time to really do that. Okay? All right. Uh, if y'all can. Okay. So what we want to do, because again, this is all about, this is all about sister hood. Y'all know everything's intentional. So we have some star wands. You can open these, just open these, and all the winter time, if you can, winter time one and two, if you can just raise your hands, please. If y'all can raise your hand, give each one two ones. Yes, I'm because we have, um, we have a good number of both parties and some of them. Yes, we're five babies. And then what we're going to do, we do the whole thing. We do the whole thing. So, what we're going to do is Dr. Dean's going to demonstrate what we're going to do as far as, I'm sorry, I got to get the word. Part as winter time sisters, one and two, what she wants you guys to do. For harvest, summer, and spring. Yeah. Okay. Now, Camille and I did not practice this. She so went into me this morning and said, This is what you got to do. No, <laughs> Camille. Oh, we can listen to that. <laughs> she wrote, said, Be ready so you don't have to read it. That's <laughs> not a problem. And thank you, Mom. Yeah. Such a oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says, so teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. Mm -hmm. And then in uh, Titus chapter two, so put that. Keep it mm -hmm. Titus chapter two says the aged women likewise that they be in behavior as become holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine. Teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, doing obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. And what we are going to do, you know, uh, I have a saying, I can tell where the map writer has been by the trail she left behind. Mm -hmm. And we have these wands that Camille was so precious to get for me. And what we want to do as wintertime sisters is to find two young people, the springtime, summertime, or harvest time, and impart a word of wisdom to them. Mm -hmm. You young people, if you want to ask us a question, feel free to do so. We're here to help you. We have learned some things in our in the wintertime of our lives. And like I said that, uh, earlier, that it has been scientifically proven that the winter time, the stars in the winter time shine brighter than they do at any other time. They're still stars, but they shine brighter. So at our ages, we should be able to shine brighter and to give you a word of wisdom. And our word of wisdom is trust God with all your heart, don't lose your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Mm -hmm. So we're going to um, we're going to inspire our young people. Um, I'm going to do mine right now. I want 
You're just imparting quick wisdom, and then um, we'll have the discussion where we can ask questions in a minute. Yes. And then when you're ready, the springtime and uh, summertime and harvest time, I want you guys to stand so the wintertime sisters will know who you are. And once you receive wands, then you can sit. I just want to impart my a little bit of my wisdom. Okay. I got him. Okay. I just want to impart a little bit of my wisdom. I got him. I got him. a beautiful young lady. And I told her my little granddaughters, my great granddaughter's name is Ayana. And that's a special name. And Ayana is a special name. And I just want to impart a word of wisdom. Father, bless Ayana. Mm -hmm. Be with her, Father. You know the challenges that she has been facing. And I thank you, God, that she is with you and you are with her. And there is no place she can't go, Father. She can excel in everything that she does. She aced out on her test, God, and I thank you for that. She didn't think that she was going to pass that test, but she aced out on her test. But please be with her. Lead God and direct in the way that you have her to go, Lord, and let her know that through you she can do anything that she she is challenged to do. She can face everything that comes her way, God, and let her know that she can be successful in everything that she does. Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, as y'all can see, wintertime's gonna do whatever they want to. She didn't even follow the race plan or see a formula. She gave us yes. a grant. But no, I'm messing with her. But yeah, so if, if um, again, it doesn't have to be much. I'm not trying to stress the winter time out. It is imparting words of wisdom. And then when we finish, then we're going to actually have a discussion. So, if my summertime, springtime, harvest time, if y'all can stand, please. Summertime, springtime, harvest time, stand. Winter time, if you go to any one of these, once you give them a wand, then the person can sit. It's okay if you have more than, if you don't get all of your wands done, we just want to make sure we touch everybody in here. So go ahead. Y'all go ahead. Okay. I need some more setup. I need some more wine. Oh. Take care of it. Okay. 
I'm so glad you came. You're doing Okay. All right. Let's go into the second part of this. Let's go into the second part of this. All right. All right. Let's go into the second part of this. Okay, so one of the things, one of the things that I know that Satan tries to do to us is to make us feel like we're the only ones going through some things. And I think that one of the things that even this whole sisterhood thing did for us, when we break out into our seasons, it helped us to see that there are several of, several of us going through the same thing and that we're not alone. Satan tries to isolate us to make us feel like we are. 
So again, at this time, if anybody has a question for our, and, and I'm gonna show y'all what questions I'm talking about. Cause see, I'm not, I'm not playing today. Don't play. I'm not playing because my thing is in order for us to continue to gain, grow, and then glow, we have to be able to ask the questions because if not you, then who? Who am I supposed to ask? Who am I supposed to go to? If it's not, a, if it's not, Lord have mercy, a woman of God. And a woman of God, since Dr. Dye wants to remind us every two minutes that they glow the brightest in winter, that, that truly them being able to impart wisdom to us. So my question to wintertime sisters, and I'm gonna um uh I need, no, 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 I just need um, a, a person ready with weights. So what I'm going to need, okay, so what, my first question to any wintertime sister who may want to answer this, and if most of them want to share a word, that's fine. My first question, I keep looking this way because I know a lot of wintertime girls here, but my first question is to my wintertime sisters, what do you do when you've been buried? And you've lost the intimacy. Oh How do you get it back? <laughs> and do you ever get it back? Mm. What do you do? And, and let me even preface it. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, sometimes it is because one one member did cheat. Sometimes it is because things have just changed. Sometimes it is because guess what? You hurt me emotionally, not physically, but emotionally by some of the things that may have been said or transpired because we were going through rough times and then now things are better, but yet I still remember what was said. So now my intimacy level is different. Let me clarify. I can still have sex with you and not be as good. That's a difference. I check that box. But lose the intimacy. So my question is, any wintertime sister that wants to answer this, what do you do when you've lost the intimacy and will you ever get it back? Thank you. That's it. No, but I can turn it to the floor. Turn off the recorder. But they can they we can leave it on so we can turn off the recording. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it won't be recording. 